Now let's move to the GP, geometric progression. Now in case of GP, uh, in AP the difference between two consecutive terms are same, whereas in case of GP the ratio of the two consecutive terms are same. So in case of geometric progression we can say the first term is A, the second term is AR, the third term is AR square, fourth term is AR cube and AR is to power 4 and so on. Now here the nth term Tn is always given as A into R raised to power n minus 1. Sum of n terms is equal to A into R raised to power n minus 1 minus 1 divided by R minus 1. R is to power n minus 1 divided by R minus 1. Okay. And again this is the sum of first n terms. Now sum of infinite terms that is always equal to A upon 1 minus R and we can find out the sum of infinite terms is A upon 1 minus R that is only possible if the mod of R is less than 1 or we can say the value of R is lying between minus 1 to plus 1. So these are the three important things. And even if you look at the cat paper, so the maximum question has been asked using this particular formula which is sum of infinite terms. We will take a couple of questions based on sum of infinite terms. <coughs> For example, this is a square and if I say the perimeter of this square is not perimeter but the length of this square is a, a and a. Okay. Now by joining the midpoint of this square, I will again get a square, again by joining the midpoint of this square, I will again get a square. Again by joining the midpoint of this square, I will again get a square and so on. This process is repeated till infinity. So my question is again, what is the sum of area of all such squares? We need to find out, let us say if A1 represents the area of the bigger square, A2 represents the area of the second square, A3 represents the area of the third square till A infinity. So we need to find out the sum of areas of all these squares. Now what we can do here, we know that the area of this square is nothing but that is equal to a square, first one. Now since this is a midpoint, so can I say this part is a by 2 and this part is also a by 2. So if this is a by 2, this is a by 2, we can also find out this particular length which is nothing but that is a by root 2. So if this is a by root 2, the area of this square will be comes out to be a square by 2. Similarly, if you look at here, this original area has been multiplied by 1 by 2. So the next area will be comes out to be a square by 4 and so on till infinity. So now we can say that this is a series in GP with a common ratio which is equal to half. So if the common ratio is equal to half, I can straight away say that is a square upon 1 minus 1 by 2 which is equal to 2a square. So this is the sum of all the areas of this square. Let us take one more example based on the GP. If I say this is a coordinate axis x and y. A person starts traveling from here, from origin. He travels 1 kilometer in the x direction. Let us say this is 1 kilometer. After traveling 1 kilometer, he travels in the y direction. He travels half kilometer in this direction. And again he travels 1 by 4 kilometer in this direction. Then he travels 1 by 8 in this direction, then we travel 
1 by 16 in this direction, then we travel 1 by 32 in this direction, and then we travel 1 by 64 in this direction. And the process is continuing like this one. Now you need to find out what is the distance of this point from the origin. So what is the distance of this point from the origin? So remember what we can do in this particular case is uh, for this join this particular part. Let us say if I say this particular distance, if I am talking about this distance, this is nothing but the distance travelled in the horizontal direction, let us say denoted by dh. And this part, let us say try to find out what is the distance travelled in the horizontal direction. So if you look at here, initially that person has travelled 1 kilometer in the horizontal direction, so write down 1. 1 and in the same direction he has came back by 1 by 4, so 1 minus 1 by 4. Now, from here to here, again he goes forward for 1 by 16, so plus 1 by 16. Again he came back 1 by 64, so minus 1 by 64 and so on. Okay. Now, this is nothing but the distance travelled in the horizontal direction. So, this is nothing but a series in GP with the first term 1 and the common ratio which is equal to minus 1 by 4. So, from here we can find out that the distance travelled in the horizontal direction is 1 upon 1 minus minus 1 by 4 which is equal to basically 4 by 5, yes 4 by 5. Similarly, we can find out the distance travelled in the vertical direction, let us say this distance is nothing but dv. So, let us try to find out the distance travelled in the vertical direction. In the vertical direction, First it is half minus, again then it is 1 by 8, then again goes upward 1 by 32 and so on. So again this is a series in GP with the first term half and the common ratio which is equal to minus 1 by 4. So we can say that total distance is 1 by 2 upon 1 by 2 minus of minus 1 by 4 which will comes out to be 1 by 2 divided by 3 by 4, not 4, that will be 1 by 2, this value will be comes out to be half plus 1 by 4 or that is basically 3 by 4, I think. Yes, half plus 1 by 4 which is 3 by 4, 1 by 2, 1 by 8, 1 by 32, take care. Okay. So, which in turn is nothing but that is equal to, I will get this as a 4 by 6 or which is 2 by 3. So, distance travelled in the vertical direction is known, distance travelled in the horizontal direction is known. If I know the distance travelled in the horizontal direction and vertical direction, by applying the Pythagoras theorem, we can find out this particular distance also. So, I hope that now this thing is clear. So, this is again the application of AP and GP. Now, come to the next thing that is easy.